Hi guys, Grand J here and welcome to another one of our deck tutorial series. Today's video I'm going to be talking about the Wind Lightning Tempo deck, I call it Double Tap. This deck is all about having two card combinations to remove your opponent's forwards and then gaining really strong fast tempo aggressive value from them. So, for those of you guys who are a little bit more visually focused, here's the deck in graphical form. So what this deck is all about, it's about using a whole bunch of two card combinations from Wind and Lightning to remove your opponents forward and combining this with Wind's utility and Lightning's uh, speed to basically put your, put your opponent on a defensive um, position for the entire game and constantly remove your opponent's threats. So the general strategy of the deck is to develop your backups and your Cactars. Now Cactar is one of the strongest new monsters from Opus 4. It's a small one cost monster that is able to constantly deal 1000 damage every uh, every single turn. So its value is really, really strong. And in this deck, its value becomes even greater. Um, using your backups and your Cactors, you can respond to your opponent's aggression very easily while also playing your own threats. And then after you have your forwards on the field, all you have to do is keep your opponent defending while you constantly remove their forwards and use haste to get tempo aggression. Um, you basically use your aggression to gain uh, additional value via Nono, which we're running three copies of. And Nono is a really strong backup. I looked at it from pre-release and I noticed that this card was really, really strong. And this is one of the best decks to really take advantage of Nono in my opinion. In terms of recommendations, I do recommend this deck to anyone who likes having responses to everything. So if you are someone who likes to have an answer to all your opponent's aggression or all your opponent's outs, then this deck has a lot of tools for pretty much every card in the entire metagame right now, whether it's archers, whether it's dragons, whether it's Odin, or whether it's just straight up forward removal, this deck has a lot of answers to a lot of the cards in the metagame. Um, if you enjoy playing combo decks and this is going to be really fun, a lot of your parts of your deck just combo up for really good synergy and yeah, it's, it's a great time to play this deck. And also if you have a natural aggressive tendency, then this deck is for you because it really makes use of Red Mage, it really makes uh, use of Nono, so it's great if you are that sort of player. In terms of power, I rate this about a 9.5 out of 10. This deck has an insane amount of uh, efficient removal. Every card pretty much has some sort of removal ability and basically your opponent's forwards are never going to live very long in most cases. And this combined with the aggressive tools of Nono and Red Mage gives you a lot of speed. You are constantly going to be on the front foot for this deck. Um, it's really, really strong and really, really powerful. In terms of speed, I rate it as a mid-range deck. So this deck um, can play um, can play threats early as well as late. Um, so, But it really sort of focuses on the mid game because it's a tempo deck and basically um, force your opponent to respond to you and play into your speed when you're in the when you're in the mid game. It scales well into the late game, but it doesn't have potentially as much game ending threats as a late game deck, and it doesn't have as much speed as an early game deck. But this deck is able to deviate um, both early and late game depending on the game type situation. In terms of consistency, I rate it about a five out of ten. The deck doesn't have uh, the deck doesn't inherently have a lot of search, but most of the cards have very similar flex, so there's a lot of redundancy there. So even though there's not much search, most of the cards will give you a lot of the things that you're looking for in most matchups anyways. In terms of difficulty, I would rate this a medium. It's a reasonably easy to learn deck, but a more experienced player will be able to close the games faster by making use of all the sort of additional uh, sort of hidden combos for the deck. And now for a card by card analysis. First of all, let's look at the forwards. To, so to start us off, we have three copies of our Cid. This card was a no-brainer. It's a four cost, 6,000 power forward, comes and brings a free, uh, free cost forward and a deal 6,000 damage to one of your opponent's active forwards. So this card is typically uh, combined with Onion Knight to be able to deal a packet of 11,000 damage. But of course, this deck also has other great cards that it combos with. It combos with Black Waltz and it also combos with Rigdia. And all of these are going to basically help you lethal out your opponent's forwards while playing two aggressive forwards onto the field at the same time. This combined with Red Mage and this combined with Nono gives you a lot of tempo and it sets you up very, very easily. Obviously, the second part to that combo is Onion Knight. When it comes into play, choose a damage forward, deal it 5,000 damage. So this on a 6,000 body at free cost is really, really good. But this card also has a secondary use as well because it combos with the legendary Onion Knight from this set. Um, so yeah, it's able to combo with that card. You're able to return this card from your uh, from your break zone back to your hand whenever you play the win legendary Onion Knight. And also the win legendary Onion Knight can search for extra copies of this out of your deck when you need them. So this card is great running free copies because there's so much synergy with it. Of course, um, you don't run Alcid unless you have another card to pair up with it. And this deck uses two copies of Rigdia. It's pretty standard. Um, when it does come into play, it deals 3,000 damage from active forward. And if you kill that active forward, 
your opponent has to dull one of their forwards as well. At a 2 for 5,000 power, it's actually like on curve and has a pretty nice effect attached to it as well. And yeah, again, it uh, synergizes with our Cid and also we have a lot of value out of this card. Just by attacking with it, we can use uh, Red Mage to haste it through. And because most of our opponent's forwards are usually going to be dead, this guy is going to be able to swing in for a lot of damage in a lot of cases. Finally, to round out the Alcid combos, we have Black Waltz Free. Now, this card is a new card from this set. It's a free cost forward at 6,000 power forward. When it enters the field and also when it enters the break zone, um, you choose one forward your opponent controls, it loses 2,000 power until the end of turn. So, this card um, basically gives a very similar effect that Brigdia does. Um, in that it does combo with Alcid, allowing your combo to remove a forward of 8,000 power. But also this Black Waltz Free, it is a stronger forward in that it has a better combat uh, combat in, uh, presence because um, like the sort of trade-off against this card compared to say Onion Knight is that um, yeah, he doesn't deal as much damage when he comes into play, but when he leaves play, he then reduces the power of another forward by 2,000, which allows this forward to trade against your opponent's 8,000 power forward, so it's got a much stronger combat presence as well. So after you do get this guy onto the field, usually you'll play with an Alcid, you're able to attack with him quite aggressively, and your opponent has to decide whether they want to trade their 8,000 power forward into this card or not. And in most cases, it's a very good trade for you. Moving on to the other cards, we got three copies of Orlando, and this card is a absolute powerhouse for the deck. It is a 5 cost 9,000 power forward, so it's absolutely on curve there. But when Orlando enters the field, choose one damage forward and break it. Now, typically it's not very easy to uh, put small amounts of damage efficiently on your opponent's forwards, but this is where Cactuar comes in. Because it's a monster that's able to dull itself to deal 1,000 damage to your opponent's forwards, and because it's a monster it doesn't have summoning sickness, it's able to use the effect straight away. So Orlando and Cactuar combos very, very well. Pretty much as long as you've got a Cactuar on the field, and your opponent doesn't have a Mimu type ability, Orlando will come in and destroy one of your opponent's forwards every single time. Not to mention he's a uh, 9,000 power forward, so typically Lightning Sword of decks did, didn't really have too many like sort of big size forwards, and Orlando's a big size forward, it's got removal, it's really efficient. Not to mention its S ability is also quite strong as well. So for S, double Lightning, choose one forward, it loses 7,000 power until the end of turn, activate Orlando. Now, this card's ability is particularly good in certain matchups, especially against the wind matchups. This is, uh, sorry, especially against the ice matchups, this is where it's really, really good because a lot of ice forwards are, are at around that 7,000 power mark and being able to use his ability, kill one of your opponent's forwards and then reactivate Orlando allows him to block uh, as well. So against an ice deck, your opponent will use something like a Genesis or a lock to um, to like try to attack you, you can always use Orlando, reactivate him, use the ability, and then reduce the power of one of your opponent's forwards by 7,000, you kill forward, and then you block whatever they're attacking you as well. So Orlando is able to get a lot of really good 2 for 1 trades um, against like Ice decks as well, and Ice is a really popular color right now, simply because Final Fantasy VI um, is so prevalent in Ice. So this card's fantastic, free copies of it for sure. Next we have free copies of Barbarisha, and this card is a very similar card effect to Orlando in that when Barbarish enters the field, choose one forward, your opponent controls until the end of the turn, its power becomes 1,000. So this card obviously again combos with Cactor, makes your opponent's um, forward 1,000 power and then Cactor can finish it off. Alternatively, if you use Cactor first and then use Barbarisha, it also works as well because damage is retained and then when the power is reduced to 1,000 power, Cactor's like, damage that's been placed on it uh, becomes lethal when their forward dies. Do note that this uh, changes their printed power to 1,000 power. So if your opponent has any sort of buffs on their forwards, um, then they still retain their buffs. So if they do have a forward um, that has like a plus 1,000 buff on them, Barbarisha's power will reduce their printed power to 1,000, but they still retain their buffs. So um, if your opponent is playing one of those backups that gives all their forwards plus 1,000 power, then Cactar and Barbarisha won't be able to leaflet out every single time. But that being said, um, if you are sort of dealing additional packs of damage, Barbarisha will be able to kill them in most cases. Being a 4 for 7,000 also is just like super, um, super efficient as well. So um, this card obviously combos well with the rest of the deck. And if your opponent doesn't have certain answers to it, Cactars can knock them out every single time. Next, and this is kind of the star of the deck, we have Onion Knight. It's a 4 cost forward, 7,000 power. Um, when Onion Knight enters the field or attacks, choose one forward, deal it 3,000 damage. When Onion Knight enters the field, choose one uh, Onion Knight um, of uh, any element except for Wind from your breaks and add it to your hand. Um, S ability, place Onion Knight at the bottom of your deck. 
If you do so, search for one a for one card named Onion Knight with job names uh, with job sage and place it onto the field. So this is a lot of the process, but this card has a lot of sort of components to it. So first of all, um, yeah, when it when it when it comes into play or when it attacks three thousand damage, so this uh, card combos really well into Lightning Color because you are able to use red mage to haste him so yeah there will be times where your opponent say has a 6000 power forward um typically like an alcid or a rigdio or an onion knight something like that you can put in your onion knight deal it 3000 damage haste your onion knight attack deal another uh, 3000 damage as well and then you're able to lethal out their 6000 power forwards not only that um when he does enter play you do get to pick up one of your lightning onion knights and put it back to your hand so in effect this card is really a two cp forward at seven thousand power as long as you've got an onion knight in your break zone so it's really efficient for its body as well and you're getting effects with it and also it's got his ability to um, job change ninja which means you can discard a onion knight from your hand to put this card back to your deck and search for another lightning onion knight now this combo is really well um with its base ability so if you play this onion knight you're dealing three thousand damage to one of your opponent's forwards you pick up an onion knight so you're guaranteed to be able to use the job change ability then all you have to do is use the the s ability you can pull out uh, you can pull uh, put this onion knight back into your deck pull out a new onion knight and if you pull out the sage onion knight it deals 5000 damage to a damage forward and because this onion knight has already dealt 3000 damage this turn you're able to uh, deal another 5000 damage to it allowing you to deal with forwards that are 8000 power as well and also puts an onion knight onto the field all very very efficiently um yeah so this card is great um, not only that, it also combos really well with uh, Red Mage in that, like, yes, when this card attacks, um, you Red Mage it. Um, yeah, you can attack with it this turn. But then you can use the job change and you can switch this card out for the Sage Onion Knight. And this, this new Onion Knight is considered a new forward and it comes in active. So you can use Red Mage again to at attack with the new Onion Knight. So this card allows you to effectively attack twice if you have your Onion Knights, uh, if you have your Red Mages available. Um, and this combo, uh, in combination with Nono, allows you to pull off this combo much more efficiently, much more regularly than you may think. Next, we have two copies of Moogle. So it is a four cost forward at 6,000 power. It's just a super efficient card. When Moogle enters the field or is put into break zone, you draw a card. So yeah, so this card will collect its overall cost um, uh, like over its lifetime back. So it is like a super efficient card in that regard. Effectively, yeah, it's a two CP forward at 6,000 power. Uh, if you consider the fact that you're drawing cards straight away and then yeah, you do get to draw a card later. Now this deck doesn't have too many like proactive plays. So if your opponent doesn't have a forward, there's not a lot of plays for you to uh, put down. Um, and this card is a great card for you to do that. You can put this down, it's it's cheap and efficient. It helps you cycle through your deck to get to the other answers. And also if you have red mage, you can just use it to, um, to haste it through when your opponent's got no forwards as well. So this card is really good and it's just what this deck needs. Next, we got two copies of Ranger. Now, this is a bit of a tech choice. It's a free cost forward at 7,000 power that cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. This card is currently really strong in the metagame because there's so many, um, so many cards that are like forward based abilities or character based abilities. Um, and Ranger is unaffected by this. Um, cards such as like Genesis, um, cards such as Setzer. Um, a lot of cards right now are forward based abilities and Ranger is immune to all of them. So yeah, Ranger is a really good play. And again, it's another good proactive play. Um, if you uh, play Ranger and you use Red Mage to haste him, your opponent pretty much has to use summons to respond to him. And yeah, so this card's another great, uh, another great proactive play if your opponent doesn't, doesn't happen to put a forward down. Next, we got one copy of Angel Penance. So it is a full cost forward at 7,000 power. So it's a little bit below the curve, but it does have haste. Um, when Angel Penance deals damage to your opponent's, um, damage, uh, when Angel Penance deals damage to your opponent, choose one damage forward and break it. Now, this card combos again really well with Cactar. Now, one of the biggest problems that Lightning has is that when your opponent's forwards are dull, it's very difficult to interact with them because Alcid, Rigdia, these are all forwards that can't interact with dull forwards. Now, Angel Penance is a great way to deal with them because if your opponent's forwards are dull, you're not able to choose them with your other forwards, but they're also not able to block you. So it means that Angel Penance can come in and he's, because he's got haste, he doesn't really have to uh, telegraph his uh, position. So in other situations where you have to play a forward, you either have to haste him straight away or you have to sit them there for a turn. Angel Penance, he can come in and he has haste, he can attack immediately. And basically as soon as he uh, deals damage to your opponent, um, or when you declare your attacks, you can always use Cactar to deal 1,000 damage to your opponent's forwards, which then when your Angel Penance, like their, atta their attack becomes successful, you're able to break one of your opponent's forwards. So Cactar and Angel Penance combos really, really well. And it's a card that allows you to regain momentum when, when your opponent starts aggressing you. Um, so yeah, it's a great, situ a great card for that sort of situation specifically. And to round things out, we have one copy of the Emperor. So 
the Emperor is really good in certain matchups, especially any sort of matchups that are very sort of um, like uh, special action based, like heavy. So um, that's a lot of uh, ice decks and a lot of wind decks. It's particularly good against. Um, and it's also really good against lightning as well because lightning makes use of a lot of a lot of abilities such as red mage such as dragon if you can put emperor down and you can haste him through lightning has a really tough time responding to him um, they have to have it like a radiant or exodus or some sort of summon to deal with him because in a lot of situations lightning just can't deal with a dull emperor it becomes very very hard for them to do so um, so yeah, so that's why we're running one copy of Emperor, and in a lot of cases, uh, have, putting an Emperor down at the right time can you lock your opponent out of their forward base responses and allows you to sort of just push through very easily. And those are the forwards, so next let's talk about the monsters. So we have two monsters in the deck, so first of all we have three copies of Cactar. Obviously we've talked about how this, how well this card combos with like majority of the forward cast. So yeah, it's a one cost monster, so it's really cheap and efficient. You can get this down in the early game very, very easily. And its ability is to dull it, choose one forward, deal 1000 damage. So because it is a monster, you can use its dull abilities on the turn that it enters play. So you can get this uh, effect immediately. Not only that, it's also got a secondary ability. So for one wind and pay two dull, you can put uh, Cactar into break zone, choose one of your opponent's forwards, deal it 10,000 damage. Cactar deals you one point of damage. EX bursts of cards put into damage zone due to this ability cannot be used. So you can't use the EX uh, bursts of the cards that you put into damage zone with this card, but otherwise it's a very strong ability. So basically breaking this card, paying free, um, allows you to do 10,000 damage to one of your opponent's forwards. Now, in case you don't have one of those two card combos to deal 10,000 damage to break one of your opponent's forwards, Cactar does allow you to um, deal with them by itself as well. So this card is, again, it's a really strong tempo play. Now, uh, the secondary ability is the ability that you, you use surprisingly more often than you may think. Um, but this is an ability that's way better when you're on offense and on defense, because when you're on offense, you generally have a lot more life to spare. So using Cactile's ability is actually much uh, more effective when you're on offense. And because this deck is so offensive and it's like such, um, such amount, uh, such a huge amount of this deck is focused on attacking your opponent, using this to gain extra tempo, um, around the mid game when your opponent say like four or five damage and you're like one or two damage, it's very easy for you to use this ability, take one damage and deal with one of your opponent's big blockers just so the rest of you guys can go through. Um, so like the, the real deciding factor or the real sort of key to this deck is knowing when to use Cactar effectively to break one of your opponent's uh, forwards and to be able to push through with the rest of your attackers. But after you sort of really master determining this uh, this outcome, then it's really, really good. Next, we have one copy of Dragon. So Dragon is a card very similar to Odin. It's a two cost monster um, you put into play and then later on you can use this ability, either pay one lightning and put Dragon in the break zone, choose one monster of cost four or less, break it, or pay one lightning and one, put Dragon in the break zone, choose a forward of cost four or less and break it. So um, this is a, in effect a Odin that you can break up into two parts. So you can put um, two CP down and put this uh, monster down at any point uh, early in the game and then when you do need it you can always break it um also it's got the ability to break monsters as well so in certain strategies where you do want to break your points monsters it does offer you the ability to do that we are running one copy um now because simply because the the meta game is uh, either very good or very bad against it so if your opponent is uh playing uh cards from wind that can't be chosen by abilities and this card becomes like weaker um, but yeah, against certain matchups, this card becomes quite strong as well. So it really does depend on your local metagame. But right now, um, right now, like considering Emperor and considering like a lot of win forwards that can't be chosen, I am sort of opting to go one dragon at the moment. But depending on your local metagame, you might up this number as well. So I will talk about this in a later video in regards to sort of upping and downing your, your dragon numbers, depending on your local metagame. But at this stage, we're running one copy of this and we're going a little bit heavier on the summoner side. And next we talk about the backups. Now this is where the deck gets really sort of interesting. So of course we have three copies of Red Mage to start off with. This is a Lightning Staple. So Lightning Dull, choose one forward against haste until the end of turn. Typically this will be used to just like um, haste your forwards that you just played for extra aggression. Now this combos really well with Nono because every time one of your forwards attacks, you get to reactivate your backups. So as long as you have Lightning, uh, lightning backups available, you can keep using Red Mage to haste every single one of your attackers. Now if you, um, if you combo this with um, Onion Knight, the legendary Onion Knight, you can attack with the legendary Onion Knight um, by hasting him, and then Nono reactivates your Red Mage. You can then job change, pull out the, the Lightning the lightning Onion Knight, and then you can Red Mage, haste him again, attack with him, and then reactivate Red Mage again. Now, this is probably the best combination with Red uh, with Nono that we've seen that's playable, that isn't Zemus. Um, and yeah, this deck just like really revolves around this card. Now, this deck is an aggressive deck, so a lot of time people will... 
um, play like Ousted Onionite or some sort of combo to remove your opponent's forwards and pass there. That is not what this deck wants to do. This deck wants to constantly be putting your opponent under defensive pressure. You want to be dealing damage to your opponent, so they are spending resources to try to match you. It's way better to discard the extra card to get your uh, to get your forwards out and then use Red Mage on them to force your opponent to like take damage. That way your opponent feels like they have to like defend against you. So your opponent is going to discard cards to play forwards to deal against your aggression. And this is where you can really sort of capitalize. So this deck, the key to winning with this deck is learning how to use Red Mage effectively and at the right times. Next, we have three copies of Archer and this deals with the biggest bane that Lightning has, Minwu. So Minwu is a free cost water backup that makes it so your opponent's forwards do not receive damage that's less than their power. So any sort of effect that, uh, any sort of effect or any sort of damage that isn't lethal just gets completely negated. And for a strategy that's ba uh, based around ping damage, then this deck, like then most decks uh, that are based around ping damage can't deal with Minwoo. And now we run three copies of Archer because it is a two cost backup. You can put this down very easily and you can always uh, break it later on to destroy a backup of cost three or less. Not only does it deal with Minwu, but it deals with a lot of other free cost backups that are also uh, pretty relevant as well. So any of the free cost backups that give um, forwards of a certain color um, plus 1000 power, it's good against that. Against certain strategies such as Mill, um, you can use to get get rid of Riku against like Riku Yuna Pain Deck, you can get rid of Riku or Yuna. Um, so yeah, so you can get rid of small guys. I have seen situations where um, playing it uh, to break your opponent's Red Mage to really slow um, your opponent's aggression down is really good as well. So Archer has a lot of application in so many matchups. Also, if your opponent is playing like a two or three color deck, using an archer to break your opponent's uh, uh, Cosmos or Chaos or breaking a backup that is a specific color can really debilitate them. So this card is a card where if you play it in the right times, can really, really wreck your opponent. Um, running free copies just seems great. It's cheap and it's efficient. And yeah, you can always break it later on if you want to clear out space for another backup. Next, we have three copies of No-No. Now, this is a free cost backup. Whenever a forward you control attacks, choose one backup you control, activate it. Now, even though it costs free, um, this card will generally never sort of like cost you the full free. So typically, I play No-No after I have one or two forwards on the field and I intend to attack with them. Now, No-No, um, yeah, every yeah, its ability triggers off immediately. So if you put No-No down and you've already got one or two forwards on the field, you can attack them and you can reactivate the, the, the backups that you spent to play No-No. So most of the time, No-No doesn't even really cost free CP because you're getting those um, getting those resources back on the same turn. Now, Nono triggers off with every attacker. So if you party attack with multiple attacker, it triggers off for every single one of those attackers. Now, um, if you play an Alcid Onion Knight, you've now got two forwards at 6,000 power. If your opponent then responds by playing a 8,000 power forward, you can, on your following turn, party attack them and then reactivate two backups with Nono. And then your opponent has to decide whether it's worth trading against your party attacker and then you've already gained two backups as well um, and it's just super good value so a lot a lot of the mid game really uses no no to sort of allow you to play aggressive forwards while also building your backups so if you got outside onion knight on the field in your main phase one you can spend two backups to put down a just like a backup like a red mage or something party attack with your two attackers no no will reactivate those two backups that you use to put down um put down red mage or a backup down with and then yeah you effectively put a backup down, down for free because of no no's ability not to mention this card also combos really well with Red Mage, just to allow you to use as many Red Mages a turn as you want as well. So no, no, of course, three copies in this deck is really good. Next, we got two copies of Black Mage. It is a two cost uh, lightning backup uh, for lightning to break Black Mage. Choose one damage forward, break it. Now, obviously this basically combos with Cactuar. So any situation where Cactuar is still a thousand, you can always use Black Mage to break itself and to break your opponent's forward. So um, this allows you to yeah, deal with your opponent's forwards if you don't have, say, an Orlando or a Barbarisha um, and you don't want to take the damage of Cactuar. So it's two cost backup, it's lightning, helps, it color fixes you, and it's really good. Next, we have two copies of Maria. So it is a four cost forward, all forwards you control gain plus 1,000 power. Now, this is one of the strongest cards in Wind, simply because it allows Wind to be played as a secondary color. Um, so yeah, giving your guys plus 1,000 power is obviously always good, right? Um, and yeah, so in certain situations, uh, especially in certain matchups where like forwards have a certain threshold of power. So for example, Water typically has a lot of forwards at around the 7,000 seven power mark. Bumping your, uh, bumping your 6Ks up to 7K is really good because now your Alcids and your uh, and your Onion Knights can trade against your opponent's 7Ks, which means that they have value both coming in, they're destroying a forward, and then aggressively when they're attacking, they're able to trade as well. So um, Maria is good and it's good to just like use this card to also uh, match your opponent's um, buffs as well. 
Next, we have one copy of Grammys. Now, when, yeah, so Grammys is one of those free cost backups that when it comes into play, search for forward over a certain category. And in this case, it searches for category 12 forward. And almost all situations, you're going to be searching for Alcid because he's pretty much the only target um, for this deck. Now, Alcid is really good this deck because there's so many different card combinations that do combo with Alcid. Not to mention, with this deck, is also running uh, the Legendary Onion Knight. So, um, the free leg the free lightning onion knights that we have in deck, we will be able to use them more often. Every time you play a wind onion knight, you do get a lightning onion knight back to your hand. So if your wind onion knight does trade at some point, you can you basically set yourself for another ousted onion knight. Every single ousted should be able to combo, and it's going to give you good tempo value every single time. Next, we have one copy of Oracle. So this is just another win backup to sort of assist us, um, especially with color fixing. It's a two cost backup. Uh, you can pay two win, dull, break it, activate all characters you control. Um, yeah, so this basically allows you to de help deal with um, certain dull and freeze type strategies where you can reactivate your guys either for offense or defense, um, but also reactivates all your backups as well. Now, this deck does build a lot of backups, so using this ability to reactivate your backups gains you a lot of resources as well, especially in certain situations where you are going for kill turns, uh, where you want to reactivate your forwards, you can attack um, You can attack them, say if they were dull or frozen, but then you can also like use red mages more often and more effectively. Um, and also reactivates your cactars as well. So um, there's a lot of really good combo potential. It reactivates all your backups and all your effects. So you can like do them all in a turn when you want to go all out and push your opponent. Also, it's just great for defense. Certain times um, in more stalemated games, you might find you and your opponent are both sort of like locked at this sort of high damage number where you're both at like sort of four or five damage, but you attacking will leave you open for defense. This is a card that allows you to attack aggressively. Your opponent will let you let some of your attacks through, and then you can use Oracle, break it, reactivate, and have all your guys for defense ready to deal with your opponent. And one copy of Black Mage. This is a free cost uh, copy of the uh, sorry. This is an Opus free copy of Black Mage um, for two lightning two um, dull break uh, Black Mage. Choose one active for the cost free or less. Break it. Now this card is a card to help us deal with certain problematic free cost forwards. Most notably uh, stuff like Garnet and most notably stuff like Ash because a lot of the ping damage isn't very effective against it because they either are uh, uh, immune to certain abilities or they get additional power. So Black Mage helps us to deal with those cards very effectively and it's a reason why we have one copy of this card in deck. Depending on the matchup you should have in mind, um, and depending on the matchup you should have in mind what threats are going to be really hard to deal with and then you can determine whether you're going to put this Black Mage down or not. And finally, one copy to Seymour, or one copy of Seymour to round it out. When Seymour enters the field, choose one forward to cost three or less to break it. Now it's a really good value backup because yeah, you're destroying one of your points forwards. And again, this like fulfills a very similar role to what the other black mage does, except this one is a enter play ability as opposed to using ability later on. Um, so yeah, there's not much to say about this card. Most times it's going to be a really good tempo play around the like early mid game. And if you don't really like need it in certain matchups, like typically in the earth matchups, they don't really run too many free cost forwards. Um, it's also great as well, but like not to mention that like it can, it can hit certain like good two cost forwards as well, such as, um, such as Yuffie or such as Ursula. So this card is going to be great in a lot of applications, but if you don't need it, you can just pitch it. So it's not a real big deal if you can't put it down. That finishes up the backups. Now let's talk about the summons. Now this deck does sort of run a more conservative, um, conservative style, and it does have more summons. Now you can definitely make this deck flow smoother by using dragons, but we're running two copies of Odin's in this deck. Um, it's a summon that's four cost, choose a four to cost four or less, break it. Now the reason why this deck is opting to go Odin's as opposed to dragons is simply because this deck has um, a pretty severe weakness to Emperor. If Emperor is down onto the field, um, there's not a lot of ways for you to deal with it um, as long as he's rested. And like that's one of the keys to winning against the Lightning matchup. You put a, uh, you put an Emperor down and you haste him in, very difficult for Lightning decks to deal with that outside of using a summon um, because yeah, a lot of their abilities just like can't be triggered at that stage. So that's why we're running two copies of Odin because it doesn't get affected by the Emperor. And people are running a lot of Emperors now because it deals with monsters. It deals with a lot of things in the current metagame. And running two Odins is kind of a must to deal with him. Next, we have two copies of Exodus. Now, this card is a very similar situation to Odin. In effect, if you don't have forwards in the field, this is actually a better Odin in that it doesn't um, it doesn't choose your opponent's um, forwards. It, you simply select a number and you can destroy all forwards of that cost. Your opponent does get to do the same against you. 
Um, but yeah, our costs of our decks are actually quite varied. We've got a lot of fours, threes, fives, and fours. So Exodus won't actually hit uh, like too many of our forwards. But in certain matchups, this is actually really good. Against Water, it's actually particularly good because most of their forwards are going to be either three cost or five cost. Um, this card can like basically like remove like two five cost forwards or two three cost forwards very easily. Um, and yeah, because this deck is usually playing a very responsive game to begin with, Exodus allows us to equalize the board very easily. And in any situation where opponent does gain like sort of um, does gain advantage to the board, Exodus is another good clear. Not to mention this is just a solution to deal with certain forwards that this deck struggles against, such as Legendary Water Cecil. Now, Legendary Water Cecil increases the power of their forwards, but also prevents them from receiving any damage from summons and abilities, which locks out a large part of this deck. Now, using Exodus, we're able to remove him, and yeah, it's another solution for that as well. So, uh, two copies of Odin and two copies of Exodus, and this helps us deal with all those forwards that are like pr practically immune to damage effects. And finally, to round it out, we have one copy of Raiden. It is the new legendary summon from this set. It costs nine. Choose to forge your opponent's control, remove the uh, first forward from the game, and break the other. Now, um, some people do really like this Raiden. I am kind of on the fence because I find it's a little bit expensive to play. Definitely in a situation where you're removing a five cost and a four cost forward from your opponent's field, it's actually very good. Um, yeah, if you're removing a, like, a legendary Cecil plus like another four cost forward, it's really, really good value in that regard. But nine cards does mean you're pitching a lot of cards, which means in, uh, in situations where you're playing Raiden, it's usually going to be free, uh, free backups, free cards from your hand, or it's going to be, say, one backup and, uh, what, four cards from your hand. So that's a lot of cards, uh, for Raiden to deal with your opponent's forwards. Um, its main value is the fact that it does remove a forward from the game. So if your opponent has a forward that has a really strong enter break zone ability, such as Renault or such as Golbez, then this is a solution to that. Now, depending on your local metagame, you might up this number to two. Um, yeah, in situations where you need it, you're glad you will have it. Um, yeah, you, you may be able to switch out Exodus for Raiden. So this like, is sort of depending on your personal preference and taste. But at this stage, um, as a more conservative build, as a more conservative base build, I do recommend at least one copy um, to help you get rid of certain like really problematic forwards. And that's it for the deck. Now, I thank you guys for tuning into this deck tutorial. It, uh, sorry, to this deck workshop. This is where we uh, sort of intro the deck and sort of give you a, a brief overview and introduction of the deck. Um, I potentially will be doing a deck uh, tutorial where we sort of go more in depth about what this deck can do um, and how it matches up. So definitely, if you have any questions, send them through to me. When I do make that video, um, I, I will have your questions uh, available so I can sort of answer them in a broader video. Um, yeah, feel free to tweet them to me at BrandJason on Twitter or leave them in the comment section below. I do po uh, post responses to most of the comments in the comment sections of my video. So do feel free to sort of ask your questions or like ask for feedback or anything like that. Um, I do respond to a lot of them. And thanks for watching. Yeah, so if you guys have any feedback or like have any thoughts, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Um, I do respond to them. Um, yeah, I, it gives me more feedback to determine what sort of future videos I should do and what sort of like content I should keep putting up. Definitely, um, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to thumbs up and subscribe. Um, yeah, it just helps with all the like YouTube uh, algorithms to make sure that I can share this content with more and more people. Um, also, I am streaming Final Fantasy um, TCG online um, on the Octagon on Octagon platform. I may be streaming on Untapped.in as well in the near future. Here are the local times of when I'm streaming. So it's Sunday to Thursday, um, and here are the local times for like America cities and um, and Europe as well. So I can't list all of them, but here's a general time of when these are going to when I'm going to be on. So yeah. So if you have any questions or if you want help with decks. Uh, pop in and feel free to ask questions. That's why I'm there for. I'm live yeah, for uh, for a couple of hours uh, most days of the week. And yeah, so if you guys have questions, definitely feel free to ask uh, ask me there. And yeah, and like otherwise, we'll just hang out and play some card games. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Grand J out.